All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. I'm excited for this one, for sure. Oh, look at this. BioWare has a new opening splash screen. That's brand new, right? That's never been before. That was cool. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Mass Effect Legendary Edition. We got... <laughs> There's Joker in the background, ardently typing. Actually, it might not be Joker. It might be someone else. But that's kind of Joker's animation for when he types. Alright, I'm very excited, guys. Mass Effect is one of my favorite games of all time. And the fact that we're going to be able to play it now with modernized graphics, modern improvements, is going to be quite sweet. The original Mass Effect is a great game, but admittedly has some bugs. Graphics at this point are massively outdated. The frame rate would dip a lot. Lots of uh, issues with glitches and stuff. Apparently they have renamed, excuse me, revamped this game to play more like a modern game. Some of the things that used to be big hangups for people have apparently been improved in this collection. I'm very excited. Now, FYI, this collection is only available for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, but I am playing on PS5, so we may see some improvements such as better frame rate and better loading times, okay? Cool. All right, so let's jump right in. Mass Effect 1. One of the best things about this is the soundtrack. So even though there's a chance that likely every video of this will be claimed on YouTube, content ID claimed, I'm going to play it with the soundtrack anyway, I don't care. I love the soundtrack of this game, seriously. Oh, I hit the credits? Oh, okay. I hit the credits. <laughs> Here we go. Well, you don't want to watch the credits first? You don't think these people deserve credit? What are you saying? All right, here we go. That's the Mass Effect loading screen right there. All right, press the any button. So I was right when I said it came out in 2007. I thought it did. I thought it was 2007. So the reason that this game really means something to me is because this was a time in my life when I was diagnosed with a severe back injury, a, a extremely herniated disc in my lower back. And I used to be a competitive Street Fighter player. I would travel all around the country to play competitive Street Fighter. But because of my injury, it wasn't going to be possible anymore. I wasn't going to be able to drive. I wasn't going to be able to travel anymore. So I wanted to get back into console gaming. Mass Effect came out. It blew me away. I hadn't really focused on Mass Effect in a very long time. Excuse me. On video games in a very long time. And when Mass Effect came out... It blew my mind of what could happen in an RPG. Like, it was sci-fi, awesome graphics, characters that had excellent character development and meant something, meaningful dialogue choices, um, you know, excellent content. Like, really, seriously. The game was outstanding, and it, like, made me feel, like, so hopeful for what gaming would become in the future. And that's why, like, I played this game once, twice. I played, like, three times in a row because I loved the game so much. Trying for different options. What would happen if I was Paragon, if I was Renegade, etc. Okay? <clears throat> So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to be able to share with you in 2021 a modernized playthrough of Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Let's jump in. That is some great music. Here we go. All right. It is time to start a new career. Welcome to Alliance Military Database. Classified information requested. Establishing secure connection. Secure connection confirmed. All right. John Shepard, Jane Shepard, or make your own character. So this is the default Shepard. Oh, that's male. This is the default female. Now, in my original playthrough, when I first played this game... What I did is I took the default and I tweaked it to try to make it look a little bit like me. This time around, I'm just going to start over and just make a brand new character. All right? Custom mail. Please log in to access your profile. Phil Shepard. All right. Here we go. Making the legend. Warning. Data corruption detected. Please reconstruct profile. Confirm pre-service history. Okay, so basically you choose your backstory. In reality, it doesn't affect much. It's a few dialogue choices and things in the game, but 
they hyped it at the time. They were like, oh, it's really going to affect things. It doesn't. So, Spacer, both you and your, both of your parents were in the Alliance military. Your childhood was spent on ships and stations, and they transferred from posting to posting, never staying in one location for more than a few years. Following in your parents' footsteps, you enlisted at the age of 18. So, basically, a military family. Okay? Uh, Lunaba just sent me $5. Said, Dude, Mass Effect, I can't even describe the feeling. Here's some support. Thanks very much, Lunaba. For a $5 tip, let's get that up on the leaderboard. You're the latest tipper. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right. So I got to ban a troll. Hold on. There we go. Okay. Colonist, you were born and raised in Mindwar, or Mind Mindor, I don't know how to say it, a small border colony in the Attican Traverse. When you were 16, slavers raided your colony, slaughtering your family and friends. You were saved by a passing alliance patrol, and you enlisted with the military a few years later. Very different situation. Basically, by chance, you, you, you were saved by the alliance, and that's why you, uh, you know, enlisted. Earthborn, you were an orphan raised on the streets of the great me megatropolises covering Earth. You escaped the life of petty crime and underworld gangs by enlisting with the Alliance military when you turned 18. So very different. Very this the spacer is basically the only one that's normal, you know, like a normal life, but it's a military life. The other two are basically terrible stories. Your family was murdered in one, and you were an orphan in the other, right? Um, I don't know. I kind of feel that spacer kind of is a little bit too cookie cutter, generic, kind of Captain America esque. So I think I'm going to go for the, for colonist. I think you were a colonist somewhere. Slavers killed your family. The Alliance saved you, so you decided to enlist. Then we're going to go with that one. Confirm psychological profile. All right, here we go. So here we go here. Um, Soul survivor. During your service, a mission you were on went horribly wrong. Trapped in an extreme survival situation, you had to overcome physical torments and psychological stresses that would have broken most people. You survived while all those around you fell, and now you alone are, the t are here alive to tell the tale. War Hero. Early in your military career, you found yourself facing an overwhelming enemy force. You risked your own life to save your fellow soldiers and defeat the enemy despite the impossible odds. Your bravery and heroism have earned you medals and recognition in the Alliance fleet. Or Ruthless. Throughout your military career, you held fast to one basic rule. Get that job done. You've been called cold and calculating and brutal. Your reputation for ruthless efficiency makes your fellow soldiers wary of you. Even when failure is not an option, or but when failure is not an option, the military always goes to you first. Okay? So. Ruthless would be like, if you're definitely going to do a, a renegade playthrough with the bad choices, you definitely go for ruthless. Okay? Um, I would argue... Soul Survivor is more dramatic, probably more realistic. You went through a traumatic experience versus War Hero, where you somehow became this, you know, this this big, again, Paragon, a leader of positivity, and everyone looks to you because you're like a tough-ass, tough-ass guy. You know what? I think I'm going to do Soul Survivor for this playthrough. That's what I think. Confirm military specialization. Okay. People are telling move the camera. Doesn't matter where I move it, it's going to be blocking shit, just so you know. But I'll move it for now at least because people want to see the options, I guess. So here, I'll move it down here. It's going to end up having to be moved again. I know it, but whatever. Okay. By the way, shout out to an anonymous tipper who tipped me $5. Says, if parents let their kids have a digital babysitter in the form of video games, is that abusive parenting? Uh, let me put it this way. If a parent absolutely refuses to parent their kid and they do anything as a surrogate for parenting, whether that's television, uh, music, video games toys, whatever it may be, you know, yeah, that's abusive parenting. When you have a kid, you have responsibility to raise that child and not just have them sit in front of something else all day long, okay? Um, that's part of being a parent, you know? But I'm not saying, I don't think that parents should have to 100% dedicate their entire lives to the kid fully. Like, a, a parent should have the, the ability to have it, their own life as well, their own interests, and obviously a personal relationship with your significant other. Uh, and that's all part of the family unit, you know what I mean? But at the same time, no, it shouldn't be you ignore the kid constantly, you know? I have absolutely no idea what that has to do with the stream, though. <laughs> okay. 
So, here's our classes that we can choose from. Soldiers are combat specialists ideal for the front lines of a firefight. They have improved health. They can specialize in the use of all weapon types. They start with the ability to wear medium armor and can train in the use of heavy armor. Now, if you're wondering what the hell that means, Mass Effect 1 is more like an RPG than a shooter. There's armor types and certain character classes can only wear certain armor types or can learn to equip better armor types. And these starter classes will determine what we can do from the get-go of the game. Future Mass Effect games, not so much. In fact, in future Mass Effect games, it doesn't affect anything at all. There's no armor like this you find. There's no loot. Instead, it's kind of like you buy the better stuff or you find an upgrade that's permanent. It's very different. Basically, over the, over the course of the trilogy, they turned this game into more of a casualized shooter to appeal to more of the masses as the series became more popular. When they started with Mass Effect 1, they basically wanted it to be like an RPG, and people, I guess, felt it was too... You couldn't do as much as you wanted. Like, what if you always wanted to use a sniper rifle, but you happen to pick a class at the beginning that can't use it? Like, ah, oh, shit, right? So that's why they made it more open later on, but okay. <clears throat> so, Engineer. Engineers are tech specialists using the holographic Omni tool. They can decrypt security systems, repair or modify technical equipment, disrupt enemy weapons or shields, and heal their squad. Engineers can only wear light armor and they specialize in pistols. So, really good abilities. You can negate the shields, heal your squad, good stuff, but you're pretty much weak with weapons. Kind of sucks. And Adept. Adepts are biotic specialists. Through upgradable implants, they use biotic powers to lift or throw objects, shield the squad, and disable or destroy enemies. Adepts can only wear light armor and they specialize in pistols. Alright? So, an adept is going to have all the fun magic, even though there's no such thing as magic. It's supposed to be like psionic abilities. Make the enemy float. And everyone can just wail on them. You know, throw the enemy across the, the screen. <clears throat> it's pretty good. I, I'm strongly considering an adept, but let's keep going. <clears throat> Infiltrator. Infiltrators combine combat and tech abilities to specialize in killing or disabling enemies at long range. Infiltrators are trained to use Omni tools focusing on decryption and offensive abilities rather than healing. They can specialize in pistols or sniper rifles and wear medium armor. Okay. Sentinel. Sentinels combine biotic and tech abilities. Typically, they use biotic abilities and advanced healing skills to defend allies, so they can also disrupt opponents with biotic or tech attacks. They're more efficient at tech and biotics than other classes, but at the expense of combat. Sentinels can only wear light armor and receive no specialized weapon training whatsoever. So, the Sentinel is a buffer. He's the one who's going to support the team, give you shields, heal the team, but not going to be able to do effective damage. I don't think that's going to be very fun for this playthrough. Vanguard. Vanguards are biotic warriors. They combine biotics and weapons to take down opponents and are especially deadly at short range. They specialize in pistols and shotguns and wear medium armor. All right. So I would say probably either going to do Adept or Vanguard. Now, if I do Adept, I'm going to have sick-ass abilities by the end of the game. I remember some of the fucking abilities of the biotics are crazy good. But if I do Vanguard, it'll be more of a hybrid. Hmm. Yeah, I think the thing is, I think I'm going to do Vanguard and here's why. Because they can wear the medium armor. If I'm an adept, it'll be good because I'll be able to shield the party and then immediately do like crazy abilities. But I'm basically kind of like very weak. I'm only going to have light armor. I'm not going to have a lot of defense. I'm going to go for Vanguard. Confirm okay. facial identification. Now let's, let's uh, work on this, huh? Look at all these. So this preset that you see right here, the default preset, is basically what I went with in my first playthrough. But what I did is I tweaked it to kind of look like myself back then. I had a crew cut. I didn't have a beard. I'm going to change it now, obviously, uh, to make it look like me. Now let's... Can we actually get a beard like mine? Well, that's it, but you can't even really see it. Like, actually... That's my... Isn't that my hair right there? I think that was it. Spiky. Yeah, that's my hairstyle right there. Right? Um, so the beard... If I can make the beard dark, but I don't know if you can. I'm gonna make the hair dark. Oh, here we go.
Just gotta make it as dark as possible. Like that. What sucks is it's not very thick or full. It's just like very... It's a very thin beard, right? Well, that's fine because everyone makes fun of me. Everyone says that my beard is always thinning or patchy. So maybe he should have a patchy beard too, right? Oh, wait, look. Well, that's, that's similar too. Let's see. I gotta get rid of those facial scars because they're very annoying. Oh no! No! Facial <laughs> no, don't finalize. Yeah, I don't want any scars. Get rid of that. Okay, that's better. That's I guess that's the closest, you know. Patch I guess it's the patchy beard. We'll go with the patchy beard, right? Alright, very nice. Okay, now we gotta change the fit that the uh Change the head. So you have to use one of these default facial structures. I would argue that's probably closest to me. And of course, I'm basically translucent. I have absolutely no skin pigmentation at all, so I have to be translucent, right? Like, look, look at my webcam and look at the color of his skin. What's closest here? That right there. That's the closest right there. All right, complexion. Oh, you can change the complexion, huh? Oh, there we go, I'm old and wrinkly. That looks just like me, an old and wrinkly man. Well, he's got pock marks on it. I don't have pock marks on my face. Yeah, I don't want the pock, I guess this one. Cause I don't want pock marks, yeah. We'll do the middle complexion. All right, head. Oh, I need a nice thick head. A nice, big, swollen, thick head. That's what I need. Okay. Is this... I don't know what this is changing. Right? I can't even... I can't even tell what that's changing. Oh, there's the neck? Oh, the neck withness. Look at the... Oh. Alright, I don't have a super thick neck. I have a decent neck. Okay. Face size. A giant face. I have a sufficiently big face. Cheek width. My cheeks, of course, they shoot off the side of my face and hit people as I walk by them. They actually knock people over. No. Actually, I don't think I have very big cheeks, right? My cheeks aren't huge. No. Cheekbones? Go with that, I guess. Cheek gaunt. Kind of swollen cheeks? I guess it's fine. Ear size. I have giant Dumbo ears that flap, and I actually fly using my ears. So we have to be sure to have that correct. That's fine. It's decent. It doesn't matter. Who fucking cares about the ear size? Ear orientation. Here you go. Big flapping Dumbo ears. My ears are pretty flat to my head. That's fine. Okay. Eyes. Hello, turtle dude. How are you today? Good to see you. All right. Eye shape. Oh, boy. <laughs> I don't know. What is my eye shape? I have no idea what my eye shape is. Do I have squ squinty eyes? Do I? Or do I have... I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. I'll go with this. Eye height. I guess we're kind of in the middle. I don't know. All right. Eye width. That's me. My eyes are straight. Oh, my God. It's fine, I guess. Eye depth. Oh, the bug eyes. The ones that stick out of your head, right? Woo! Or sucked in. Sucked into my head all the way. I don't know. I don't think mine are sunken in, but I don't think I have bug eyes either, so it's probably somewhere in the middle. <clears throat> the blackest eyes? I have the blackest eyes. That's correct. Brow depth. No, my eyebrows actually jut out really far. So actually, I should have that go out as far as I can. Yeah, my eyebrows jut out really far. Brow height. 
go like that. And the iris color should be brown. Dark brown. So probably right there. Alright, that looks nothing like me, by the way, but okay. Jaw! <laughs> that looks nothing like me at all. Chin height. I don't have a super deep chin, do I? It's pretty small, actually. Smaller chin, but chin depth? My chin... I have no idea. Chin width. Let's do a narrow chin. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what this looks like. Okay. Snow Carl, I'm well aware that there's no panel that says my tips link. That was the false DMCA claim that I got. You have to do the tip command to bring up the link, dude. I know, it's annoying as fuck. I had a false DMCA claims last night against my channel art of all things. And this morning I had to set up other stuff. I didn't have time to put the panels back. So you gotta type exclamation point tip. Okay? Yeah, it sucks. Okay. Jaw width. A giant chunky jaw. There we go. Mouth. Uh, that one looks like he's smiling. I have no idea. I'll go with that because I have no clue. Mouth depth. <laughs> go with that. Mouth width. It's going to take forever. <laughs> No, you can use the tip command. The problem is that people are spamming it constantly. When you spam it constantly, it times it out. It's only supposed to be posted like once a minute. You know? See, the tip command just worked right there. See that? Okay. Look at those pouty lips. Now, we all know I have giant lips, right? Like this. I don't know. We'll go with that. Mouth height. Great. It still doesn't look anything like me. <laughs> it still doesn't look anything like me at all. No shape. That right there. Either that, actually, that's close, isn't it? Maybe a little too pointy. I'd say, I'd argue that's close. It's a little, I think it's a little too long. If it was, it was it's too long and pointy, right? See, that's... It goes too high up. Maybe that? <laughs> well, Super Scuba, thanks for the fake nine-month resub. He's a nine-month Sally first subversary without a crown. Be able to listen to DSP Gaming. I cannot attend the entire stream. Yes, so I'll be uploaded to DSP Gaming after the stream. Uh, I guess... I guess that's close. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Is that close or not? I have no idea. I'm gonna go with this, I think. I'm just gonna go with that. It's good enough. Alright, hair we did, scar we did. That's it. That's me. Does it look like me? Not really. <laughs> not really. <clears throat> Alright. We're good? Hair shape just hit me a dollar thirty. Says, "What's the best Shrek movie?" Um, I'd probably go with one. One is the classic, right? I don't. I actually don't really remember the plots of many others, but one. I saw them all, but only one really resonates. So I'll say one. Shrek one. There you go. All right, we didn't waste that much time making a character. I thought we'd be here for at least seven, eight hours, and this would be the majority of the stream. But uh. No, we did it. We made our Phil Shepard. He looks terrible, just like me. And now we can finalize. Actually, I want to mess with that nose one more time. <laughs> one more time. What about this one? All right, we're going with that. Looks terrible. Finalize. Profile reconstruction complete. Here I am. Complete. I'm in the game. I am in the game. I'm ready. Phil Shepard, the colonist, sole survivor, and a vanguard. All right, we're going to begin. Get ready. It's literally me. Like, it's the spitting image of me. Right? 
Looks exactly like me. It's me. It's like my head was taken off of my body and glued onto this this character. I can't believe it. All right, let's do Identification it. Identification confirmed. All right. So here's the thing. Let's see what happens here. In classic mode, the original 1 to 60 level range will be used instead of the new 1 to 30 level range. XP and talent points progression remains the same, but the number of levels is doubled. So legendary mode is new. It's totally new. They've made this different. See that? Now, normal veteran hardcore insanity. I think I'm going to do... Yeah, I'm going to do veteran. Bosses scale up on the player's level. Some enemies have special protection. I'm going to do veteran. We're going to go one, one level up. Okay, so I will challenge myself a little bit. I don't want auto leveling up. I want to pick my own. Subtitles on by default. Yes. Squad power use. None defense all. They will only use defensive powers to protect themselves or others. Let's do this. And then what you can do, you can manually tell your squad to do attacks. In previous games, basically you couldn't do that like... It, this is the really the only one. After this, uh, it changes a little bit. By by Andromeda, you can't even control your squad anymore. They do whatever they want. But in this one, you can tell them manually to do abilities. So I'm going to go with defensive. And auto save on? That sounds good. Andre the DJ has sent me $2.86 as a mirror image. Yes, that is definitely a mirror image of me. The spitting image, right? Looks exactly the same as me. Right. <laughs> okay, thank you, Andre the DJ, for the tip. I appreciate that. That gets us up to $328 in tips, and we're about to finally start with the game. All right. <laughs> finally. After a half an hour of character customization. All right, let's do it. The only bummer is you can't really select a voice. That would be cool if you could, right? Can't. Well, what about Shepard? He grew up in the colonies. Oh, he knows how tough life can be out there. His parents were killed when slavers attacked Mindwa. Oh, Captain Anderson... He saw his whole unit die on a cruise. He could have some serious emotional scars. Every soldier has scars. It's me! Shepard's a survivor. Is that the kind of person we want protecting the galaxy? That's the only kind of person who can protect the galaxy. I'll make the call. All right. In the year 2148, explorers on Mars discovered the remains of an ancient space-faring civilization. In the decades that followed, these mysterious artifacts revealed starting new, starting new technologies enabling travel to the furthest stars. The basis for the incredible technology was a force that controlled the very fabric of space and time. They called it the greatest discovery in human history. The civilizations of the galaxy call it Mass Effect. There you go. Hope you gaming, this is uh, a full 60 bucks. Is a P PS4, Xbox One only, and it is all three games included. So it's three games for the price of the one. Basically. In range, in oh man, seeing this, sequence. dude, seeing this modernized graphics and 60 frames is crazy. 60 frame Mass Effect One. We are connected. Calculating transit mass and destination. The relay is hot. Acquiring approach vector. Damn, it looks very different. It's so cool. All it's also on track. PC? Okay, I didn't know that. It's on PC as well. Out of the way, asshole. I'm trying to get to the bridge. The board is green. Oh, yeah, I look great. Oh, oh, I look so bad. He looks terrible. That's great. He looks so bad. The music is so epic. Getting the relay in three, two, one. Woo! Warp speed. Thrusters, check. Navigation, check. Internal Very nice. motion sync engaged. All systems online. Drift, just under 1500k. 1500 is good. Your captain will be pleased. Oh, Nihilus. <laughs> I hate that guy. That looks nothing like me at all. Nihilus gave you a comp. Oh, it's, that's Kaiden. Never mind. So you hate <laughs> him. Remember to zip up your jumpsuit on the way out of the bathroom? That's good. I just oh, my God. Look how ugly he is. And hit a target the size of a pin. <laughs> that's incredible. Besides, specters are trouble. I don't like having them on board. 
Call me paranoid. I know, Spectre's He's a dick. Screw them. The council helped fund this project. They have a right to send someone to keep an eye on their investment. Yeah, that is the official story. But only an idiot believes the official story. Nah. So I agree, you're overreacting or cut the chatter. I gotta figure out where I wanna put the camera now. I don't know where I'm gonna move it. Because this is gonna block dialogue options. We'll figure it out anyway. Let's say you're overreacting. You always expect the worst. <laughs> well, bad feelings are an occupational hazard. But we don't go anywhere unless there's a good reason, so... What are we doing here? Joker. Status report. Just cleared the mass relay, Captain. Stealth systems engaged. Everything looks solid. Good. Find a comm buoy and link us into the network. I want mission reports relayed back to Alliance Brass before we reach Eden Prime. Aye, aye, Captain. Better brace yourself, sir. I think Nihilus is headed your way. He's already here, Lieutenant. <clears throat> Tell Commander Shepard to meet me in the comm room for a debriefing. You get that, Commander? Is he upset? I heard you made him mad. I heard. I'm on my way. To... Is it me or does the Captain always sound a little pissed off? Only when he's talking to you, Joker. Huh. <laughs> Saving content. Oh my god. Look at my character. Oh my god, his head is so bad. It looks just like me. It's hideous. It's absolutely disgusting. I'm no wow. Again, Mass Effect in 60 frames. I am not used to this. This is very different from the Mass Effect that I remember. Some of the textures look terrible, right? Like some of them look like this like very old textures, but. You can talk to Kaiden. Oh, yeah, Kaiden. You can talk to everyone here. Uh, shout out to Garrus Vicarian. Just to me, $7.07 seven as I finished calibrating, so here's some credits. Thank you, Garrus. We haven't met you yet in the game, but you will be coming soon. Thank you very much. Let's add that to the running total. Thank you, guys. $335 and counting. Thank you for the support today. We're just getting started, right? Very nice. Thank you, guys. Okay. Kaden. You probably don't want to keep the captain waiting, Commander. Oh, Joker? The captain's waiting for you in the comm room, Commander. What's weird is their voice volume is like lower now. You notice that? Captain came in says you can look at options in the photo mode. Let's take a look, actually, what are the options of the game? Graphics. Motion blur on, film grain on. Some people don't like the film grain. Resolution, favorite quality or favorite frame rate. Uh, I'll favor quality only because I get I feel because we're playing this on PS5, it certainly should be able, able to handle high quality. So we're gonna leave it at that. Sound. But all the volumes are max. We may have to adjust that later. Calibration. Brightness. For now, I guess we'll keep it on default. It seems alright, right? Okay. Gameplay weird. Alright, we're good. Okay. And by the way, you can save pretty much whenever you want. Let's save up. Turn off the blur, it hurts FPS and looks bad. Well, we'll find out. Let's see. Presley, got something to say? Congratulations, Commander. Looks like we had a smooth run. You heading down to see the captain? Heard you arguing. Sounds like you don't trust our Turian guest. Sorry, Commander, just having a chat with Adams down in engineering. I didn't mean to cause any trouble. But you have to admit, something's odd about this mission. The whole crew feels it. All right, what do you mean? You think the Alliance Brass is holding out on us? If all we're supposed to do is test out the stealth system, why is Captain Anderson in charge? And then there's Nihilus. Spectres are elite operatives, top covert agents. Why send a Spectre, a Turian Spectre, on a shakedown run? Is it just me or... I don't see film grain. Am I blind? I don't see film grain in the graphics, right? I don't know. Uh, Timbo Slice says, I noticed a lot of HD Remix voice audio is lower. I guess it shows how bad audio was. But yeah, I mean, I think what it is is, you know, they go to the... They go to the original samples of audio, and sometimes they're not as high quality as they wish they were, right? Hmm. All right, anyway... The Spectre. You don't trust Nihilus. I don't like Turians in general. It runs in my family. No, you're my a racist. My grandfather fought in the first contact war. Lost a lot of friends when the Turians hit us. That was 30 years ago. You can't blame Nihilus for that. No, I guess not. But it still makes me nervous to have a Spectre on board. Especially a Turian. 
We're an alliance vessel, human military, but Nihilus doesn't answer to the captain like the rest of us. Spectres operate outside the normal chain of command. Now, they don't come along just to observe shakedown runs. <laughs> Nihilus looks like he's expecting some heavy action. I don't like it. Yeah, that's right. Basically, Spectres can do whatever they want. They have the authority to kind of override governments and, and, um, and uh, jurisdictions. And basically, they have overall authority by the council which is in a, basically a group of, of races, all the alien races kind of agree to make certain people uh, the Spectres. So it's kind of scary. He's like, wow, if the Spectre is doing a good job, great. But what if they like, they're really throwing their weight around doing whatever they want and they're not held accountable for anything, right? So that's why people are afraid of them. All right. I'll see if I can get some answers when I see him. Good luck, Commander. All right. So I got some experience for that. See that? You get bonus experience for having certain conversations. I grew up on Eden Prime, Doc. It's not the kind of place Spectres visit. There's something Nihilus isn't telling us about this mission. That's crazy. The captain's in charge here. He wouldn't take orders from a Spectre. Not his choice, Doc. Spectres don't answer to anyone. They can yeah. do whatever they want. Kill anyone who gets in their way. Oh, you watch too many spy vids, Jenkins. Hmm. <clears throat> what do you think, Commander? We won't be staying on Eden Prime too long, will we? I'm itching for some real action. I sincerely hope you're kidding, Corporal. Your real action usually ends with me patching up crew members in the infirmary. Duh, she's the doctor. Relax, Jenkins. You need to calm down, Corporal. A good soldier stays cool, even under fire. <laughs> Sorry, Commander, but this waiting's killing me. I've never been on a mission like this before, not one with a Spectre on board. <clears throat> You'll do fine, it's just another mission. You need to about Eden Prime. You're from Eden Prime, aren't you, Jenkins? Oh, yes. What's it like? It's very peaceful, Commander. They've been real careful with development, so you don't have any city noise or pollution. My parents lived on the outskirts of the colony. At night, I used to climb this big hill and stare across the fields back at the lights from the main settlement. It was gorgeous. But when I got older, I realized it was a little too calm and quiet for me. That's why I joined the Alliance. Even Paradise gets boring after a while. All right, we know why we're going there. Any idea why Eden Prime was chosen as our destination? Not really sure, Commander. Eden Prime is one of our most stable colonies. Good place to take the Normandy for a shakedown run, I guess. No real danger there. There's got to be something else going on. We've got a Spectre on board. That's why I'm so wound up. I can't wait for the real mission to start. <laughs> so, Madman5005 says, The graphics are horrible. I'd rather save $60 to play the original. You do realize that these are the original graphics just upscaled, right? Like, they didn't redo the entire graphical yo, thing of the game. I mean, they, they upped the frame rate and everything, but obviously it's not going to look next-gen or anything. <laughs> All right, anyway, you'll do fine. Just treat this like every other <clears throat> assignment you've had, and everything will work out. Easy for you to say. You proved yourself on a coup. Everybody knows what you can do. This is my big chance. I need to show the brass what I can do. Here you go. Be careful. You're young, Corp. <laughs> you have a you long career ahead of you. Don't do something stupid to mess it up. Don't worry, sir. I'm not going to screw this up. The captain's waiting for me. Goodbye, Commander. Paragon plus two. So all of your dialogue choices will either fill Paragon or Renegade. And the goal is to try to max one by the end of the game because when you do, you get all these extra bonuses. Yeah. I can't run or anything right now. And these doors don't open. All right, here we are. Nihilus. Hello, Baldy. How are you today? Good to see you. Under the DJ just hit me two dollars eighty six cents. He says, "Is there only one human that a Spectre must answer to, Colonel Sanders?" What? Commander <laughs> Shepard, I was hoping you'd get here first. It will give us a chance to talk. Oh shit! Under the DJ. Thank you, sir, for the tip. Now, when you say Colonel Sanders, you mean me as Colonel Sanders, right? That's right. They must all answer to me. That is correct. You hit it right on the head. All right. <laughs> Okay, let's continue. Uh, where's Anderson? <clears throat> the captain said he'd meet me here. He's on his way. I'm interested in this world we're going to. Eden Prime. I've heard it's quite beautiful. They say it's a paradise. Yes, a paradise. Serene, tranquil, safe. Eden Prime has become something of a symbol for your people, hasn't it? Proof that humanity can not only establish colonies across the galaxy, but also protect them. But how safe is it, really? <laughs> What's your point? If you've got something to say, just say it. Your people are still newcomers, Shepard. 
The galaxy can be a very dangerous place. Is the Alliance truly ready for this? <clears throat> I think it's about time we told the Commander what's really going on. Ah. This mission is far more What's than really a going on? That's obvious. I already figured that out. We're making a covert pickup on Eden Prime. That's why we needed the stealth systems operational. So why the secrecy? Or you should have told me to say why why the secrecy? Here we go. <laughs> there must be a reason you didn't tell me about this, sir. This comes down from the top, Commander. Information strictly on a need to know basis. A research team on Eden Prime unearthed some kind of beacon during an excavation. It was Prothean. Prothean? I thought the Protheans vanished 50,000 years ago. Their legacy still remains. The mass relays, the citadel, our I'm ship drives. Face. It's all based on Prothean technology. This is big, Shepard. The last time humanity made a discovery like this, it jumped our technology forward 200 years. But Eden Prime doesn't have the facilities to handle something like this. We need to bring the beacon back to the citadel for proper study. Obviously, this goes beyond mere human interests, Commander. This discovery could affect every species in Council space. All right. So basically, what they're talking about is the mass relays. What we just used to jump and do a warp. Those aren't man-made. Those aren't even alien-made. Those were just there, and they were discovered by humanity. And it basically jumped everyone's technology forward. And all these aliens now can interact with each other because they have a way to get to each other's galaxies and everything quickly. Once the mass relays were discovered. Now apparently, the mass relays were created by the Protheans. Which is a race from 50,000 years ago that doesn't exist anymore. So with them saying, wow, we found a beacon from the Proteans. The last time we found Protean tech, everything changed about our life. So this could be a really exciting discovery. Okay. <clears throat> Why do we tell the council? You sound worried. So you sound worried. Are we expecting trouble? I'm always expecting trouble. <laughs> There's more, Shepard. Nihilus isn't just here for the beacon. He's also here to evaluate you. <laughs> Guess that explains why I bump into him every time I turn around. The Alliance has been pushing for this for a long time. Humanity wants a larger role in shaping interstellar policy. We want more say with the Citadel Council. The Spectres represent the Council's power and authority. If they accept a human into their ranks, it shows how far the Alliance has come. Let's try this. Not many could have survived what you went through on Akuz. You showed a remarkable will to live. A particularly useful talent. That's why I put your name forward as a candidate for the Spectres. You put my name forward? Why would a Turian want a human in the Spectres? Not all Turians resent humanity. Some of us see the potential of your species. We see what you have to offer to the rest of the galaxy. And to the Spectres. We are an elite group. It's rare to find an individual with the skills we seek. I don't care that you're human, Shepard. I only care that you can do the job. All right. <clears throat> you support this, Captain? I assume this is good for the Alliance. Earth needs this, Shepard. We're counting on you. I need to see your skills for myself, Commander. Eden Prime will be the first of several missions together. You'll be in charge of the ground team. Secure the beacon and get it onto the ship ASAP. Nihilus will accompany you to observe the mission. Okay. Why is this beacon so important? All advanced galactic civilization is based on Prothean technology, even yours. Right. If we hadn't discovered Everything. those Prothean ruins buried on Mars, we'd still be stuck on Earth. That was just a small data cache. Who knows what we can learn from this beacon? What if it's a weapons archive? We can't let it fall into the wrong hands. Like who? Mm -hmm. The Attican Traverse isn't the most stable sector of Citadel space. There are plenty of raiders and criminal groups active in the region. They might figure a Prothean beacon is worth the risk of attacking an Alliant ship. Plus, Eden Prime is right on the border of the Terminus systems. The Attican okay. Traverse is under Citadel protection. If the Terminus systems attack, it's an act of war. Technically, yes. But some of the species in the Terminus might be willing to start a war over this. The last thing the Council wants is to get dragged into a major conflict with the Terminus systems. We have to keep this low-key. All right. Just give the word, Captain. We should be getting close to Eden Prime. Captain, we got a problem. What's wrong, Joker? Transmission from Eden Prime, sir. You better see this. Bring it up on screen. Uh-oh. <laughs> <clears throat> Looks fun. Get down! Looks 
like the terminus system's already there. We are under attack, taking heavy casualties. I repeat, heavy casualties. We can't get evac. They came out of nowhere. We need. Ouch. Uh oh. Everything cuts out after that. No comm traffic at all. It just goes dead. There's nothing. Reverse and hold at 38.5. Mm -hmm. Status report. 17 minutes out, Captain. No other Alliance ships in the area. Take us in, Joker. Fast and quiet. This mission just got a lot more complicated. A small strike team can move quickly without drawing attention. It's our best chance to secure the beacon. Grab your gear and meet us in the cargo hold. <laughs> Tell Alenko and Jenkins to suit up, Commander. You're going in. What is that? Dun dun dun. <laughs> okay. Engaging stealth systems. Somebody was doing some serious digging here, Captain. I'm not Your seeing the film muscle grain. in this operation, Commander. Mm. Go in heavy and head straight for the dig site. What about survivors, Captain? Helping survivors is a secondary objective. The beacon's your top priority. Approaching drop point one. Nihilus, you're coming with us? I move faster on my own. Nihilus will scout out ahead. He'll feed you status reports throughout the mission. Otherwise, I want radio silence. All right. Can we trust him? I don't like putting my life in the hands of a Turian, sir. Nihilus is on our side. He wants you in the spectrums, and he wants that beacon. All right. We've got his back, Captain. The mission's yours now, Shepard. Good luck! We are approaching drop point two. Whoa. Ship perimeter secure, Commander. Guns! So are we... That's Caden. And then we've got some generic dude on our team. This place R2 fire. Hostiles everywhere. Oops, that's through a grenade. So that was square was a grenade. <laughs> this holster's the weapon. Okay. Alright, here's my abilities. So we've got... Aiden can use sabotage or throw. Sabotage overheats nearby enemy weapons and burns them for minor damage. Throw allows you to throw enemies and objects using a mass effect field. So that's what Caden can do. I can warp to enemies all nearby enemies and objects and makes them more vulnerable to further damage. And I could also throw. Okay. And we have no... This guy's just a, a, a rube. He can't do anything. You crouch with left thumbstick. I forget how you run... Oh, it's X. X runs. Alright, this looks so weird in 60 frames. Seriously. This is just really odd. There's melee circle. Gas bags. Look at those. Haha. <laughs> You can shoot them, but it doesn't really do anything. Now, I don't know if they added new achievements and things to this game, right? I don't know. Yeah. Kill it all! Kill them all! They all must die. No one must survive. So, I have a handgun. I have a... Sniper rifle, uh, assault rifle, and I have a shotgun. Everyone has every kind of weapon, right? Let's have him equip the Lancer. I'll try a shotgun. Because I'm a Vanguard, so the shotgun's supposed to be better, right? So this is harder difficulty. It's veteran difficulty. It's going to be tougher combat. Okay. <clears throat> Uh oh! Immediately killed!
Okay, that hurt. I forget how to heal. Nice, we did a combo attack. I totally forget how to heal. Is it up? Oh, that's a comm channel. How do you heal? I've totally forgotten. <laughs> uh, not good. I've completely forgotten. Hopefully there'll be a prompt for it. Medi gel. Now how do I get medi gel? Like how do I use it? Oh, okay, triangle. There we go. Nice. Got some burned out buildings here, Shepard. A lot of bodies. <clears throat> I'm gonna check it out. I'll try to catch up with you at the dig site. Okay, we have uh, uh combat points we can use right off the bat, right? This is no, this is hard difficulty. Oh, I see D pad orders your squad to different positions. That's right, Elite Shadow Ninja. So called this is hard difficulty. This is veteran? Yeah, it's one step up from standard. Okay. Um I need six points of pistols to upgrade, sh upgrade shotgun. Assault training. Increases melee and weapons damage. Grants adrenaline burst. We can upgrade throw. <clears throat> if you keep upgrading throw, then you get lift, and lift is really good. We have so many. Look, we have charm, intimidate. This will help in conversation. Obviously, we don't care about that right now. Uh... Let's put one into throw, and let's put one into assault training. Oh, I have one more point. All right, then we'll put one into warp as well. Uh, we'll do sentinel. <clears throat> First aid. Now he can, now he can use meta gel as well. See that? Okay. We can save up as well. Alright. <clears throat> Very good. Continue on. I keep thinking run is left thumbstick. It is not. Oh, look, there's a new lighting. Look at that. So attack is up. Move, move to a point, left or right, and down and regroup. Okay, got it. Stuck on this tree. Ha <laughs> I punched it. Disgusting. Alrighty then. By the way, you don't have to reload. Your guns just basically uh kind of regenerate over time, so you don't have to be reloading ammo and stuff. In future Mass Effect games, there's ammo. In this game, there's not. Run! <laughs> oh my god! What are they doing to him? Oh! Ouchies! The frame rate makes it so much smoother of an experience, man. All right, let's get these fucks. Hello, <laughs> here to help. I overheated. Nice. Thanks for your help, Commander. I didn't think I was gonna make it. Gunnery Chief Ashley Williams of the 212. You the one in charge here, sir? Snowcar, what do you mean stream quality is super bad? I don't know what you're talking about. Stream looks fine. 60 frames. Uh 
I see nothing wrong. What's wrong with the stream quality? It's 240p for you? Oh, I have no idea what to tell you. I'm not streaming at 240p. I don't know why it's 240p, dude. <laughs> Maybe it's screwed up. Maybe Twitch screwed up. I don't know. Okay. All right. So, what happened here? Give me a status report, Williams. Oh, man. We were patrolling the perimeter when the attack hit. We tried to get off a distress call, but they cut off our communications. I've been fighting for my life ever since. Where's the rest of your squad? We tried to double back to the beacon, All but dead. we walked into an ambush. I don't think any of the others... I think I'm the only one left. This isn't your fault, Williams. You couldn't have done anything to save them. Yes, sir. We held our position as long as we could, until the Geth overwhelmed us. The Geth haven't been seen outside the Vale in nearly 200 years. Why are they here now? They must have come for the beacon. The dig site is close, just over that rise. It mm. might still be there. Mm. Alright, join us? Yeah. We could use your help, Williams. Join the squad. Aye, aye, it's time for payback. Have you seen a Turian Spectre around here? There aren't any Turians on Eden Prime. None that I've ever met. Not sure I'd be able to tell if one was a Spectre anyway. If you saw this guy, you'd know. Carries enough firepower to wipe out a whole platoon. <laughs> Luckily, he's on our side. Sorry. Like I said, no Turians. What else do you know about the Geth? Just what I remember from history class back in school. They're synthetics, non-organic life forms with limited AI programming, created by the Quarians a few centuries ago. They were supposed to be a source of cheap labor, but ended up turning on the Quarians and drove them into exile. Well, after that, they just kind of disappeared behind the Perseus Veil. Nobody's really heard much from them since. All right. So I'm being told now that the quality for some people is fixed. I guess it dipped and went back up, but that's a Twitch thing. It has nothing to do with me, so I can't affect this, sadly. What about this beacon? Tell me everything <clears throat> you know about the beacon. They were doing some digging out here to extend the monorail and expand the colony. A few weeks ago, they unearthed some Prothean ruins <clears throat> and the beacon. Suddenly, every scientific expert in the colony was interested. That's when they brought us in to secure the site. I don't know much about the beacon itself, but I heard one of the researchers say this could be the biggest scientific discovery of the century. Okay. What happened to the researchers at the dig site? I don't know. They set up camp near the beacon. The 232 was with them. Maybe their unit fared better than mine. Alright, we, all right, I guess we're good. Let's go. Move out. Alright, so she's joined the squad. Her abilities... Oh. Access the mission computer and go to the squad. That's right, I have to level her up now. So, she is a specialist in what? I forget. Let's see. Soldier. And assault training. So, let's just put it right into... Oh, overkill. She's a new ability. Overkill. Let's level up her assault rifle to level 2. And let's see. Let's save. And we're going to see what her ability uh, abilities are as a soldier. So she just has overkill, which we just unlocked, which is allows long bursts of assault rifle fire without overheating. So you can just keep firing nonstop without the gun stopping. I see. Got it. Okay. Very nice.